Um, I also want to tell you that Dina and I met today, and we are going to continue with our Tuesday, Thursday Bible study until, which you would think I would, like, have it down. <laughs> June, mine's going to be until June 23rd. Okay. Wow. Okay. Wow, so that's they, when school's out. That's when school's out, and I start my vacation on the 28th, so we're okay. on the 30th. But we're going to do it all the way through June until the 23rd. Great. Okay. Um, That's a lot of people. Well, I told Dean, I said, well, we'll just go till you're finished, Matthew. She's like, we're on chapter five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so... Anyway, we're going to do it till then, and then reassess and see if we want to do something more different in the fall. Okay? Okay. That's good. All right. So let's get started with today's... Woman. Woman, special, right. Yes, special woman <laughs> guest. Okay, here we go. Probably Hannah. No, not <laughs> Hannah, but I should do Hannah. That would be you should. Fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, I got lots of weeks now, so all I'm going to add her to my list. There you go. There you go. Okay. All right. Let us pray. <clears throat> we give thanks, O God of sacred stories, for the witness of holy scriptures. Through it, you nurture our imaginations, touch our feelings, increase our awareness, and challenge our assumptions. Bless, we pray, our hearing of your word this day. Speak to each of us. Speak to all of us and grant that by your power of your spirit, we may be hearers and doers of your word. Amen. All right. I am gonna-, you gonna join me? Jan, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear me? We can. Good, thank heaven. All right, good, you're have, all set. I'm having trouble getting in by phone also. Oh man, you're having a rough time yeah. today. Okay, here we go. Okay, so our person okay. today is Deborah. All right. Okay. Oh. So Deborah is quite the strong female character in the uh, Hebrew scriptures. And this is where she falls on our timeline. Now, I put our other people oh, on our timeline too. Okay. okay. So um, we have Lot here all the way in, you know, 2000 BC. Then she is actually the next one in our timeline right here, right around 1100 BC, towards the end of the judges. Mm -hmm. um, but Samson, remember, was the last judge. Okay. I have on the next slide, there is a um, timeline of all the judges. So we'll look at that. Then we have Elijah and Esther hanging out over here, and Esther is our latest person, okay? So this, I'm gonna turn into a real picture and put it up in the Facebook group, okay? okay. Since this has all our people on it, okay? And then every week we'll just keep adding to it, right? Okay, so here is the timeline of all the judges. So. Oh, that's interesting. There's one thing I want you to notice, okay? A judge comes in to rule when there's some kind of war or oppression happening. Can you okay. make it a little teeny bit larger, Hannah? Uh, oh, perhaps. Oops, sorry. Hold on. <laughs> I don't know if I can. That's okay. Maybe I'll grab put this. I'll put this up on the Facebook page too. Okay. Okay. I don't think yep. I can make the slides any bigger. More. Yeah. Not a picture that you can grab a corner? No, it's not. Oh, it, no, it's not a picture. Got it. Sorry. No, um, no problem. Okay, so the main thing I want you to notice is that, see here, it's like Moabite oppression. And then this judge, who I don't know how to pronounce her name. Ehud. Ehud comes into power, right? Then the Canaanites move in. And that's when they bring in Deborah and Barak, right? So after each oppression, a judge comes in or to end it, okay? Hmm. So the kingdoms kind of ruled themselves, okay, in the 
during this time, the different kingdoms ruled themselves until they became under oppression. And then they kind of united and then a judge was like voted in. Okay, to kind of oversee that. Interesting. Okay. okay, so keep that in mind as we read her story. Okay, so this is our map. Um, basically, so she, it says very specifically, um, and I think this is in the text, not in the annotation that I read, that she ruled from Mount Ephraim, which is around here somewhere. Mm -hmm. And um, between Rama and Bethel. So Rama is right here and Bethel is right here. Okay. So it was somewhere in here. Okay. Okay. This is also important. So keep that in mind. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we're going to do it a little differently. We're going to read her story from um, front first to beginning to end. Okay. okay. Um, and then we're gonna kind of go back and look at some specific things about the story, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so do I have, there's three slides, so I need three reader volunteers. I'll read. Okay, Betsy can read first, Carolyn, you read second, Jan, Brinza, you read third. Okay. Am I on, do you see me, Hannah? We do see you. Yes. You see us? I just didn't know whether I got, got I know I'm on, but I didn't okay, know you were on me. Okay. Yes, we can see you. Okay. That's my right. sister, everyone. Yes. I know. I'm so glad that she did that, that you're joining oh, us today. Well, Jan, told me about what you were doing, and it sounds great. Well, good. Well, I hope you feel that way at the end. Okay, here we go. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I read this, fir this first whole slide. Is that what yes. you want me to read? Okay. Yes. The Israelites, again, did what was evil in the sight of the Lord after Ehud died. So the Lord sold them into the hand of King Jabin of Canaan, who reigned in Hazor. The commander of his army was Sisera, who lived in some place. Mm -hmm. Then the Israelites <laughs> cried out to the Lord for help. For he had 900 chariots of iron and had oppressed the Israelites cruelly for 20 years. At that time, Deborah, a prophetess, wife of Lepidoth, was judging Israel. She used to sit under the palm of Deborah. What? She used to sit under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites came up to her for judgment. She sent and summoned Barak, son of Abinonam, from Kadesh in Nephthali, and said to him, the Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, go take position at Mount Tabor, bringing 10,000 from the tribe of Nephthali and the tribe of Zebulon. I will draw out Sisera and the general of Jabin's army to meet you by the Wadi Kishon with his chariots and his troops, and I will give him into your hand. Barak said to her, if you will go with me, I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. And she said, I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, the road on which you are going will not lead to your glory, for the Lord will sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. Then Deborah got up and went with Barak to Kadesh. And Barak summoned Zebulon and Nephtali to Kadesh. And 10,000 warriors went up behind him, and Deborah went up with him. Mm. Now, Haber the Kenite had separated from the other Kenites, that is, the descendants of Hobab, the father-in-law of Moses, and had encamped as far away as Elon Bezananim, Bezananim, Elon Bezananim, which is near Kadesh. When Sisera was told that Barak, son of Abinoam, had gone up to Mount Tabor, Sisera called out all his chariots, 900 chariots of iron, and all the troops who were with him from Harosheth Hagoim to the Wadi Kishon. Then Deborah said to Barak, Up, for this is the day on which the Lord has given Sisera into your hand. The Lord is indeed going out before you. So Barak went out down from Mount Tabor with 10,000 warriors following him. 
And the Lord drew Sisera and all his chariots and all his army into a panic before Barak. Sisera got down from his chariot and fled away on foot, while Barak pursued the chariots and the army to Harasheth Hagoim. All the army of Sisera fell by the sword. No one was left. Now Sisera had fled away on foot to the tent of Jao, wife of Heber the Kenite. For there was peace between King Jabin of Hazar and the clan of Heber the Kenite. Jael came out to meet Sisera and said to him, Turn aside, my lord, turn aside to me, have no fear. So he turned aside to her into the tent, and she covered him with a rug. Then he said to her, Please give me a little water to drink, for I am thirsty. So she opened a skin of milk and gave him a drink and covered him. He said to her, Stand at the entrance of the tent, and if anybody comes and asks you, Is anyone here? Say no. But Jael, wife of Heber, took a tent peg, and took a hammer in her hand and went softly to him and drove the peg into his temple until it went down into the ground. Mm -hmm. He was lying fast asleep from weariness and he died. Then as Barak came to pursuit, in pursuit of Sisera, Jael went out to meet him and said to him, come and I will show you the man whom you are seeking. So he went into her tent and there was Sisera lying dead with a tent peg in his temple. So on that day, God subdued King Jabin of Can Canaan before the Israelites. Then the hand of the Israelites bore harder and harder on King Jabin of Canaan until they destroyed King Jabin of Canaan. Good Lord. So there's a lot of female power in the story. Mm -hmm. So what are your first impressions of Deborah? I'm going to go back to the first slide. What are your first impressions? What are your impressions of Deborah? She's a prophetess. She, mm -hmm. She's seeing to, you know, she knows what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. She certainly isn't afraid to obey what she thinks the Lord wants her to do. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And she wasn't afraid to go into battle. Pretty brave. No, she was she, not afraid. She was also a judge. People would come up and ask, mm -hmm. ask her for information or assistance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mount Tabor, isn't that where um, Jesus took James and John and the Transfiguration? Yeah, Mount Tabor. Um, Maybe. I, I feel like we've heard Mount Tabor yeah. before. I feel like that's on. Let's see if it's on our map. Hang on. Go back. And, and Wadi Kishan, we heard last week. Yeah. Yes. We, yeah. We heard. Right. <laughs> so Wadi Kishan, you can see here on the map, it's like a, this little offshoot of the River Jordan. Okay. Okay. And let's see if Mount Tabor is it, on. Yeah. It's right there. Yeah. Yeah, right here. So it's probably like right here on our map. Okay. Okay. And they were getting people from um, Naphtali, which is up here. And what was the other one? Zebulon, mm. right here. Yeah. So these were really northern armies that were marching down, that marched down to no, Tabor. A massive army. I was struck by that. Yeah. 900 iron chariots and how many thousands of Men on foot. Oh. Ten thousand. At least ten thousand. That's that's a lot of people. Yeah. It's a lot of people. I would say Deb uh, is uh, very authoritative. Mm -hmm. She knows what she's doing. Yes. Well, so she there seemed to know what was going to happen at the end. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So this story, I don't know if you guys have seen Lord of the Rings, mm -mm. but the part, there's a part in Lord of the Rings where the big baddie comes up and he's like, I can be killed by no man. And then she takes off her helmet and she's like, I am no man. And then she kills him. And that's what this reminds me of. <laughs> 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 that scene <laughs> in Lord of the Rings. 
I did look up Mount Tabor, and that oh, yeah. is where the transfiguration occurred. Ah, bonus points for Susan. Yes. Oh, Betsy. No, Susan said it. I just looked oh. it up. <laughs> she confirmed it. She, she was our fact checker. She's the research person. That's right. <laughs> okay, so there's a couple things um, that um, I want to bring to light about the story. Number one is in the first sentence in that second paragraph where it says, at that time, Deborah, a prophetess, wife of Labadoth, was judging Israel. So not only was she a woman, but she was also a wife. So that is not normal wife behavior in the Bible, right? <laughs> to have a position of power. Um, and this is the only time he's mentioned. It doesn't say if he went with her to battle. It doesn't uh -huh. say, oh yeah, he was pleased that his wife was the judge, you know, it never mentions him again. That's it. Like most she, wives she, are in the Bible, this was just like a passing, oh yeah, she was wife of this guy. And she has a palm named after her. <laughs> yes. Okay, so this is the other detail. I did a lot of research about the palm of Deborah because it's like, what an odd detail yeah. to keep in here. Okay, so here's what it says. First of all, this says that she stayed in one location and people went and sought her out. Okay. Right? It doesn't say, oh, she was traveling around and people sought her wisdom. No, people traveled from all over and they knew exactly where she was. So that's, that kind of elevates her status, right? So yes. the palm of Deborah, they believe, is a date palm tree mm. and listen to what it represents and think about the story peace plenty grace elegance majesty military triumph wow what right? a palm i know quite a palm and the other thing is this was written long long time after this happened and they chose to remember that detail mm. Mm. I always think it's so fascinating when you read Bible stories and they have really specific details. Right. Then you're like, this must be really important that they felt the need to write it down. Right? And pass it on. Huh. Okay. So, one, she was a wife. That's an odd thing for that time. Two was about the palm tree and her location. Um, three, she was a warrior, right? Now, it doesn't say exactly that she went into battle, but Barak, or Barak, said to her, if you go with me, I'm going to go, but if you don't go, I'm not going. <laughs> like, he wasn't going to go without her, and he was the commander of all these people, I mean, ten, thousands and thousands of men were under his command, and he's like, I'm not going if you don't go. So she was held, held in, in high regard. Yeah. Yeah. And it must have been, I mean. Good luck charm. Maybe. Maybe <laughs> for a good luck charm. Yeah. Maybe she had some kind of military tactical Yeah. Yeah, I would knowledge. For simplistically, but I mean, he even, she even said, okay, I'll go with you, but you're not getting glory out of this, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, totally. What was the hierarchy? Is a judge over him? Is she over him? I'm not sure. I think so. Yeah, I would think so, but I'm, I don't know for sure. Yeah. So the other interesting thing yeah. was also in that first line where it says, at the time, Deborah, a prophetess, wife of Labrador, was judging Israel. So remember mm -hmm. I said that judges came to power after someone took over, right? Mm -hmm. This reads to me like she was already judging people before they went to battle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is different than it all the it. other judges that I could find. Can you go back to the timeline or the judge thing? Again? Yes. See if we can figure out what was going okay. on. So. It's too small. So it's Canaanite oppression. 
It says, yeah, this Canaanite oppression right here where it says 12, 1268 to 1250, which is about, which is like 20 years. That's what they said, right? God sold the Israelites into the Canaanite for about 20 years, right? And then it says it mentions her at that time at 1250. So the timeline doesn't overlap, mm -hmm. okay? But remember, I just found this on the internet, so. Um, but to me, this reads that she was already in a position of wisdom and power before they decided to unite and go to battle. Mm -hmm. Does that read to you like that? Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. Also, their, their hierarchy, she was asking about hierarchy. And if you go and read at the end of this second paragraph, it says, um, let me see. For the Lord will sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. Mm -hmm. So still there, that's still below whatever hierarchy because in the Bible, men were always above women. Right. I'm just looking in my... Interesting. Okay. Um, <clears throat> my notes, I have an ESV study Bible. Yeah. And it's this, this emphasis of stating her, she is a prophetess, mm -hmm. decides that this woman is the leader in Israel. And this is because the men lack faith, courage, and leadership. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Deborah, a prophetess, is introduced at the point where the narrator usually mentions the deliverer. Uh, the word prophetess occurs five times in the Old Testament. Look at you, Cheryl. Look at this. You ready? These are all the prophetesses. <laughs> Great minds. Awesome. Awesome. Great minds. Okay, so I did have a note. Now, it didn't say where the hierarchy is in, like, military. But I, I looked about three different... Um, stations, right? So the first one is the king, which kind of comes after judge. So the king, but right now the king is God, right? So we have the king up here on the highest, which is God. Then we have priests and prophets, which are kind of on the same level. So priests are the represent, they represent the people to God and a prophet represents God to the people. Mm right? Ah. So a prophet is like a God spokesperson. A priest intercedes for the people. Wow. Right. Interesting. Right. Cool. So if you look, there's five, five prophets, prophetesses, four are named. Okay. So the first one is Deborah, which we just read about, right? A spokesperson for God. The second one, or really, I guess the first one, if you're going in chronological order, is Miriam. Mm -hmm. Okay, where it says, then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took out a tambourine in her hand, and the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. Okay, so in Exodus, Miriam, which I think it's fascinating that they call her Aaron's sister and not Moses' sister. Um, ah. mm -hmm. Did they had wow. different... <laughs> Yeah. Did they have different what, Susan? Different? Maybe they were half brothers. Or... Oh, yeah, that's right. <clears throat> that's right. Um, so that's the first one, okay? The second one, her name is Hulda. Hulda. Hulda, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, in Second Kings, okay? So it says the priest, oh, here we go. Helkiah, Akim, Akbor, <laughs> And Asaya went to the prophetess Hulda, the wife of Shalom, son of Tikva, son of Harsis, keeper of the wardrobe. She resided in Jerusalem in the second quarter where they consulted her. Wow. And that's her mention. I wonder what the second quarter is. I think it's part of the temple mm -hmm. or part of the um uh like the old jerusalem mm -hmm. i think it's like a like a neighbor like a section yeah mm -hmm. neighbor 
I just didn't know which section. I'm not sure. All right, and then the third one is Nodaya. Okay. And this is from Nehemiah, who's also a prophet. Okay. So it says, remember to Tobiah and Sanballat, oh my God, according to these that they did, and also the prophet Nodiah and the rest of the prophets who wanted to make me afraid. Hmm. I don't know much about Nehemiah's story. Maybe I'm going to add him to our list. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the last one is unnamed, but she is wife of Isaiah. Isaiah, big prophet, right? Um, so, and I went to the prophetess and she conceived and bore a son. And then the Lord said to me, name him Meher Sha'ala Hashbaz. For before the child knows how to call my father or my mother, the wealth of Damascus and the spoils of Samaria will be carried away by the king of Assyria. So, yeah, the last one is Isaiah's wife. And then she conceives and bears a son with this super cool name. So, wow. Yeah, so, but I thought it was so cool that there were five of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and Deborah is really the only one who has her own story. I mean, Miriam is a, like a secondary character. Yes. In, in the Exodus story. I mean, she, but she's not the main character like Deborah is. Is Miriam the one that took her baby brother Moses to put him in the bulrushes? That yep. Okay. Yep. So you see her kind of at the beginning of the Moses story and then at the end of the Moses story. Mm. And there's lots of midrash about what, what else she was involved in in that story. Okay. All right, so um, another note that people chose judges, right? But God chose prophets. Oh. And Deborah was chosen by both. Right. Hmm. Mm hmm. Wow. Yeah. She must have been right on. Yeah. And how different is she than our other judge that we looked at, Samson? Yeah. Right? I wonder why she was so exalted with the people and with God. Because none of the other ones are judges and prophets. Right. Well, that could be why. Yeah, maybe. And the fact that she's a woman also. Mm -hmm. She is the only, I'm, I'm pretty sure she's the only woman judge. Woman judge, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like it. Mm -hmm. Yep. The RBG of her day. She totally <laughs> was. <laughs> <laughs> she totally was. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> So, and we really read her whole story. I mean, it's only, yeah. I shouldn't say only, but it's 10 verses, okay? Now, here's the other part of it. And this is your secondary homework reading, if you wanna do it. Right after this passage, there is a song of Deborah. Mm, okay? yeah. Just like yeah. there is a song of Miriam, mm -hmm. which ah. happens right after her verse. Right? So the song of Deborah um, was, it comes right after it in Judges 5, and it's rather lengthy, and it's a song. It's poetry and tribute. Um, some, it, there's some debate whether she actually wrote it or it was just written about her, about her to exalt her. But we do know that the song of Deborah was written first. 
Oh. So it was written first, and then they went back and kind of filled in the details and wrote her story down. Hmm. Huh. It is lengthy. It is lengthy. Is there um, any significance that it's a song? I mean, if there's so, a song of Miriam and there's a song of Deborah, but there's not, not a song of the other prophetesses. I don't know, because songs are, I mean, songs of particular people are not uncommon. There's a song of Moses and a song right. of, you know, major people. Um, so it says here in my annotated Bible that this is a hymn of praise, thanking and extolling God for overcoming the enemy that threatened his people. The people here, this is important, only refer to the northern tribes. Like they didn't okay. really care about the southern tribes right now. Um, which suge suggested that the poem was composed in the north. Notwithstanding the similarities between the song and the prose story with respect to the main characters and various details, there are also significant differences such as the name of the tribes who participated in the battle and the absence of Yabin in the song. Um, the prose narrative was likely composed after the song, attempting to resolve some unclear matters. The poem is written in the first person, expressing spontaneous enthusiasm and using contrast and extreme transitions. Although the text is often unclear, the song reflects the atmosphere of the Northern Kingdom. Mm -hmm. Right? So, um, yeah, so it is long, but it does read like poetry. My study Bible says many scholars believe that this song is the oldest part of the Bible. Interesting. Yeah, it doesn't elaborate though. Interesting. It's also one of the most obscure and difficult. Because it's obscure and difficult? Is that what it says? No, it says it is also one of the most obscure and difficult. Oh. It celebrates the Lord's role in the victory over Sisera for a sudden downpour that disabled the chariots in the battle. Mm. Its primary attribution to a woman fits the role women have elsewhere in victory celebrations. Mm -hmm. The more emotional celebration of the victory. I thought that was the oldest part of the Bible. Interesting. Interesting. Because I've also read that Job is our oldest book of the Bible. Yeah, that's what I had heard. Right? So, who knows? I mean, maybe this was just a part and Job gets the whole book. I don't maybe. Know. Yeah, maybe that's it. Yeah, I don't know. Um, hmm. So, yeah. So, I offer you that as some uh, light reading about a battle. Some <laughs> enthusiastic <laughs> song of a battle. Um, I like the pen, the stained glass. That's pretty. Thanks. Um, oh. This was, this is in a church in Paris. And um, I liked it because she's sitting under her palm tree. Yeah. There you go. Which the one at the beginning, she was standing on the steps of a building, which I thought was weird. Yeah. Um, but I liked this one because she's sitting under a palm tree. Cool. Yeah. So, um, yeah, any other, any other final thoughts about Deborah? The last line of the song says, and then the land had rest for 40 years. Aha. Uh -huh. Good. They needed it after that. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> Repopulate the land. No. Where, where was Canaan? So Canaan... I don't want to make anybody seasick going through my thing, but okay. Um, because I thought the Hebrews were Canaanites. Right. Hold on. Old I don't know. Hold on. Anybody have thoughts on this? I try and look it up. I'm gonna look it up. Okay. Canaan, let's see. Okay, here we go. Yeah. You win. Star is good. 
There are no starred cities on this map. It sort of goes. Okay, so in my map, in the other map that I didn't take a picture of in my Bible, it says uh, tribal conquests in chapter one. So it goes all through the battle between the Israelites and the Canaanites after the death of Joshua, right? So after Joshua, then we enter the judges period. Um, and then it says in some cities, the starred cities on the map, which there are no starred cities. So maybe they meant squares. Yeah, squares, cities where Canaanites continued to live. So I think it sounds to me like there were pockets. I'm gonna hold this up. See how some of the cities are squares? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think what it means is there were pockets of Canaanites, maybe. Um, or they were trying to. They hold on. Let me see if there's a map at the end of Joshua. Because I think the Canaanites were what they were trying to rid of the land that they were claiming for their own. Maps are so hard to find the right information on a map at the right time period because this part of the world shifts like the territories and the kingdoms shift so right. much throughout history. It's so hard to find a map that um, is in the right I just think, time. I think it's an area. I think I it is think it's too. A, I, I don't think it's a necessarily a specific place. I think it's like a region. Yeah, and I, yeah, it's a region. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just found something that shows a map that's pretty much this whole area. Okay. Yeah, because if you go back in Joshua, Joshua is trying to put conquest of Canaan, which is, which is like the region. So I guess the Canaanites are the people who are not Israelites. Just like mm. yeah, I, I would yeah. together. What Susan? What they lived say? together, and there was just an uprising within. Yeah. Or something. I think so. Or they had specific kingdom pockets because they do mention the king. So maybe like a pocket of Canaanites kind of overthrew the Israelites for a, a part of time. Uh, here, <clears throat> this this says at the top of it the land of Canaan, and it's like the whole yeah. Yeah, I think he goes up the Dead Sea uh, and the Sea of Galilee, maybe not up to the Sea of Galilee, but this map says that Abraham's migration to Egypt and return to Canaan, and that shows Hebron and Mamre, so I imagine it's in that area, and Bethel, yeah. Hebron, Ashdod, etc. Yeah, so I think what's happening in the Judges is we're trying to shake down territory, right? Because we're, we're also shifting from Canaan to Israel and the two kingdoms, right? You have Israel in the north and Judah in the south. Mm -hmm. so at this time of the judges, we're moving from Canaan with Canaanite, shifting to Israel with Israelites. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is all, because remember the people, yeah. the Israelites were like, give us a king. And God was like, you don't really want a king. Right. So he gave them judges instead to kind of as like an interim. Right. right, from going from tribal to kingdom, he gave them this kind of interim piece, which is the judges, which is kind of shifty. So is the message of all this, if there's a, a, a message in, in this battle or whatever, is mm -hmm. it that um, Barak did not really gain glory because he didn't have the faith? Uh, he didn't have the faith of the Lord to protect him? And that's why think? that's why Deborah, you know, said you're you're not going to get the glory. It's going to go to this woman here. I don't know. What do you guys think? What's the takeaway from from Deborah's story? That's that's my takeaway. Okay. I 
I mean, because he insisted that she go with her, would mm -hmm. she go with him instead of him just taking her command and going, you know, mm -hmm. I think she was questioning his faith. Mm -hmm. So I think my takeaway from this is a phrase that we use at, I don't know, a couple different things I'm involved mm -hmm. in. It's called right person, right seat, right? Mm -hmm. You want to find the right person to be in the right position that has the correct skills. And I think this story to me says that Deborah, regardless of what she was a woman or a wife, she was the right person in the right seat. Mm -hmm. And that we can learn from that, that, you know, it, regardless of people's status in different cultural ways, if it's the right person, you need to put them in the right seat. Mm -hmm. That's my takeaway anyway. What, what are some other thoughts? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, my thought was that don't un basically don't underestimate who God chooses, which basically goes into what you were saying. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think any of these people thought, especially in that culture, that a woman would, number one, go into battle. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, and I'm quite sure that they were a little overwhelmed with having her in the position that she was in. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I, I very much go with what you're saying. Don't, don't, don't second guess God. I like that. So, so, so Deborah that. must have really had a very strong prayer life too. Mm -hmm. I mean, to, to be able to know what God was telling her and how to, mm -hmm. how to have, have the different people uh, do what he was commanding. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, logistically, that's a lot of, a lot of different pieces. Mm -hmm. So she yeah. really must have had a very strong prayer life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. The story doesn't really go into the relationship between Deborah and God, which mm -hmm. it does where a lot of other prophets yeah. um, and their call story and why God chose them and so on and so forth. It doesn't really shed any light on that. No. And yet, the results are there. Yeah. I'd like to read a memoir of, of uh, Deborah's life. <laughs> I think that would be a lot of fun. <laughs> I think it's funny that except for Ed, we're all women tonight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is interesting. Sorry, Ed. <laughs> all right. Well, any final thoughts on uh, our friend Deborah here? <laughs> My, um, my Bible says the name Deborah means bee. Just for bee. I I love that. Bee. Yes, like a bumblebee. Yeah, like a bumblebee. <laughs> wow. Like an insect or to be like to be? No, like an insect. Like a, like a honeybee, maybe. <laughs> but she was queen bee. Queen bee. Yeah. That's right. And she liked trees. So there you, there you go. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so I think that fits. <laughs> If you look at the book of, I mean, if you look at a map where um, all of the uh, the 12 tribes landed in the land of Canaan, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Asher, Manasseh, Gad, and all of them, I would imagine that is Canaan. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. The area is Canaan. It's on the west right. and the east side of the Sea of Galilee and uh, the Dead Sea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I have one map in the really? Bible that shows Canaan as a very big area kind of running along the edge of the Mediterranean between the, the Mediterranean and Jerusalem. Yeah. I think I'm also going to add to our list something about like the beginning of the 12 tribes. I think yeah, that's that sounds interesting. Like Joseph? Paul says Cana. Joseph. Paul said Cana is, is is actually all of Israel. Yeah. With maybe a little bit more. That's yeah. Cana. Okay. So so talking about the call, um, mm -hmm. the call of Deborah. I actually have a, a book from this whole discernment process, um, and it has about Deborah's call in it, mm. and um, it. The title of it is called by a community. Mm -hmm. So um, she was, let's see, 
it, it began with a crisis was was the first one obviously mm -hmm. and um let's see the second stage for deborah was hearing god's voice involved in the community does he's already a judge go ahead does, does it give any biblical references yes oh great um <laughs> Well, obviously, it has uh, Judges 4, 1 through 5, 31. Okay, right. Um, and also, hold on. Okay. Had King's reference. And when the, uh, when the Israelites cried out, which is 315. Um, the crisis, which was 4-2. Okay. 2 and 3. That's what we read. Yep. Right. Then, um, let's see, when they came to have the disputes decided, which we already read, four mm -hmm. to five. Mm -hmm. And then the poem adds, the people of the Lord went down to the city gates. Wake up, Deborah, wake up. And that was in five, 11 to 12. Oh, so perhaps there's more of her call story in her song. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. All right. Yep. Cool. So, and what was the name of that book? Uh, it's called Ears to Hear, <laughs> Recognizing and Responding to God's Call by Edward Little. Okay. Thank you. Uh, it has all uh, has a whole bunch of different ones like um, Amos and Jacob and Moses and Gideon and different ones. Okay. Oh. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. All right, friends, well, we're going to do our ending prayer. <clears throat> do you know what we're going to do next week? Who we're going to do next week? Okay. I have no idea. I decide on Friday. <laughs> and it's and always a surprise. And she doesn't yes, tell anybody. It's, it's always no. a surprise. Even though people try to wiggle it out of her, too. I know. It's funny. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, yeah, so I have a list of people that we've kind of talked about throughout our time, and then I usually pick one on Friday because Friday is my big work chunk day because James doesn't have classes. So, um, yeah. Okay. Don't tell anyone until Tuesday. <laughs> when you get this done and just think of it on Fridays. Wow. Well, you gotta, you know, make use of the time you, you have yeah. of quiet. Okay. <laughs> Let us pray. <clears throat> Dear God of hope, comfort, and strength, we thank you for guiding us through these turbulent waters. Help us to turn to you even as we see illness, death, and insecurity all around us. Instill serenity in our hearts that we may discern your will. Show us what is truly valuable. Teach us how best to care for ourselves and one another. Today we pray especially for our St. Andrew's community. Resurrect our faith. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Hannah. Yeah. You're welcome. This Thank was you, a good Hannah. one. Very impressive. Cheryl, join us on Thursday for Matthew. I am. I'm planning to. Good, I have, good. I have been meaning to for a long time, but I had to finally put an alarm on my on my clock. <laughs> I have to put an alarm. I have to put an alarm on Tuesdays at 5:05. Yeah. My alarm goes yeah. off. Yeah, I do. I, it's just weird. So I get it. Hey, Hannah, we're still recording. Oh, still recording. Stop.